Hello, my name is Dario De Batista. I was a corporal in the Marine Corps Reserve from 2001 to 2007. Uh, I was pretty eager, enthusiastic. You train for a specific purpose. It was, um, it was kind of your job and you kind of get excited that that's your job. Iraq is fundamentally different than anything you do here in the States. Um, everywhere you go, there's a constant state of alertness. You don't know if somebody you're shaking hands with has a bomb under their clothes, whether um, there's uh, roadside bombs hidden on trash that you're driving next to, whether somebody's on a rooftop trying to drop a grenade into your Humvee. Um, it's just really hard. It kind of creates this constant sense of adrenaline, fear, um, anxiety when you walk outside wherever you're living um, usually you'd be in some sort of structure usually some sort of uh, solid structure just walking to go use a, a porta john bathroom <clears throat> you know a rocket could fall a mortar could fall it was uh, pretty dangerous all the time I did civil affairs which in a nutshell is after everything was blown to shit it was my job to build it back up so you think about the fundamental fundamental areas of an infrastructure, uh, education, healthcare, power, security, governance, fuel, food, water, all that stuff. We would try and uh, assess and reinvigorate. So, so we'd have weekly meetings with the city council. Uh, we'd help train Iraqi police. We'd tour schools to see if they were um, in need of repair, and then we would hire contractors to fix them. We made sure the water desalination plant worked. We helped build a prison. Um, did some goodwill stuff like handing out soccer balls and medical supplies. And um, you know, we were kind of uh, supposed to be the cultural experts. So when the grunts would go um, door to door doing what they did, we would be on hand to the, I don't know, I guess try and make them more sensitive. You know, uh, the military is like anything else. You have ups and downs. Uh, the difference is the military has extreme ups and downs. When you come home from spending seven months in a combat zone, uh, the sense of like ego and like power and <clears throat> thrill you get is unlike anything that you can really describe. It's really surreal, just how cocksure and tough you feel. Um, you know, and it's a great, great experience. Like you survive. That's awesome. Go home and hang out with friends and family. And, lovers and whatever else uh, but there's downs you know um, when you lose a friend in combat it really sucks uh, I lost one of my really good friends uh, Sergeant Bill Gear. he was a uh, reporter by trade he was in the reserves uh, he went overseas doing civil affairs and uh, he was shot in the neck and killed um, older dude joined when he was in his 30s joined just because of 9-11 <laughs> and um, you know he left behind his wife who was pregnant with twins a PTSD is a condition that follows, as the name implies, a traumatic event. What happens is, is that someone experiences an event and naturally stress occurs because of the traumatic nature of the event but uh, that's a normal process. But what happens is, is that usually resolves within a month or so. But after, uh, after a month, if people are continuing to experience uh, the conditions that, uh, that are part of PTSD, then it becomes a disorder. And that's the disorder part, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. No regrets. The, there was a lot of hardships. It was very, very tough for me to come home. Like a lot of service members, um, it was really hard to reintegrate. You just come home with like so much adrenaline and 
energy and drama in your life, it's hard to just kind of relax and be calm and all that stuff. I, uh, I came home from overseas in 2004. That was the end of my second deployment. There wasn't a lot of conversation about <clears throat> mental health uh, and what our service members are going through and how that might affect them. It didn't even make sense to me to really, I don't want to say blame it on the war or attribute it to the war. It was just kind of, I thought I was just young and immature and, um, you know, I was going through like a heartbreak uh, with a relationship. I just thought it was a lot of things like that. It didn't necessarily connect to me that it was because of my service overseas. Um, so yeah, um, I knew I wasn't well and I probably should have sought help, but the military is very machismo kind of organization, kind of environment. You gotta be tough, you gotta be badass. And sometimes it's seen as weakness or it's usually seen as weakness to go seek help. So I never did, even though I probably should have. There are several different treatments. Uh, one, uh, probably the most common, is, is talk therapy. And usually this would be cognitive therapy, helping, uh, helping the people who are dealing with this, uh, uh, this disorder uh, think differently. And then through thinking differently, then they can, can begin to feel and act differently. Um, a lot of times medication may be involved, uh, usually an antidepressant, uh, something like uh, Zoloft or, uh, or Prozac or something like that. Um, there's also um, other, other types of treatment. For example, there's what's called EMDR, which is uh, eye movement uh, desensitization and reprocessing, which is uh, it's an unusual technique where the therapist uses their hand and moves their hand and the person follows the movement of the hand while they're talking about the, uh, about the event and that helps desensitize the person and, and uh, improves their situation. Uh, I work a lot of jobs now. Um, I run a freelance, I manage my own freelance uh, writing and editing career. I run a magazine called 20-something magazine. Uh, I'm publishing an anthology with the University Press about Iraq and Afghanistan veterans and their families and those who care about them and the coming home experience involving that. <clears throat> uh, I bartend, serve tables, and I teach college part-time um, at Community College of Baltimore County. And I also teach writing as therapy for service members who have post-traumatic stress disorder and traumatic brain injury at Walter Reed National Military Medical Th Center in Bethesda. The experience made me a better person because I think, unlike a lot of people um, in America, where generally life is pretty easy compared to the rest of the world, um, I know that my time here is ephemeral and I try to live every day to the fullest. It's not just some cliche for me. Um, I have friends who are not alive and would love to be able to have the opportunity to live every day. So I try and live an awesome life for them.